Joining us again at Renewal Biz today to talk further about the Nomad PDU, but specifically the most common questions that we're getting in regards to the unit that will help you make a decision of whether this unit is right for you and the situation you're going to put yourself in with your camping and four-wheel drive needs. The first question, again, I've got about 15 uh, questions here I'll cover off. It's going to probably take two or three tutorials because uh, a couple of them will take few, more than a few minutes to explain. So uh, you'll probably see three tutorials on the home page. Click through them and you'll see the about 15 items that we get asked most from the customers. The first one, quite simple to answer, uh, can you use the Nomad PDU to jumpstart a vehicle uh, of any sort. No, you cannot. This unit is not designed for as a jump start. The chemical composition is not what you typically would use for a jump start uh, pack anyway. Um, so no, do not use it under any circumstance as a jump start pack. Uh, your chance of damage the unit is very high. Um, so again, don't do it and you avoid your warranty. So absolutely no circumstance do you ever jump start with the Nomad PDU. The second question, and it's probably the most pertinent because the most of the reasons people buy these units it's going to be because they want to use a fridge of some type with the unit when they're out camping. Um, so the question again, how long will it run my fridge? Um, it's kind of a question that is how long a piece of string is because there's so many different types of fridges. There's so many different types of, um, I guess, uh, engineering involved in the fridges, ages and so on and so forth. And also, I guess, the, uh, how economical those fridges are. So the simple thing is we have to ask is what is the size, what are the contents, are they cold or warm? You know, is the fridge warm to start? What's the outside temperature? What temperature are you going to set the fridge on? Um, for example, uh, and also more importantly, what is the voltage range that your fridge will operate? Because a lot of fridges may not operate under 12.6 or 11 volt. Um, this unit fully charged is 12.6, discharged is 8.4. 80% um, DOD, what that means is that a 100 amp hour battery like this, you will have 80 amp hour of usable power at least. So, for example, what I'm going to do here is show you that on this unit we have an amp meter. The amp meter is designed for the reason that you don't have to be a technician to understand what your accessory is doing. So with a fridge, for example, a typical fridge, say 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 litre, depends, but at night time when the fridge is already cold, may only use one or one and a half amp during the night. So for example, if I turn this light on here, this light here is only using, uh, it'll go up to about 0 0.7. So 0 0.75, let's just say for example, from a mathematic perspective, that was pulling one amp. You have 80 amp hour of usable power. How long is that going to last? It's going to last me 80 hours in theory. It'll probably last 84, 85 because lithium actually has a recharge every hour sort of rate. So it recovers, is what I'm trying to say. So this here at 1 amp an hour is going to give me 80 amp hours. Now your fridge, for example, if you have a fridge already and you want to test the unit to make sure that you're getting as much out of it as you can, what you do is you take the lid off the fridge, you plug it in so the fridge is warm. It will run now flat out and trying to get to its temperature uh, from the thermostat. So I would set it on zero, take the, the lid off, put it in a warm area and let it run flat out. It will run at a max rate, it might be two and a half, 2.8, whatever amp, okay? So what you would do then is just watch the fridge and say, well, how, long, how many hours did it last for? And if it lasted, for example, 32 or 33 hours and it was pulling two and a half amp, well, 33, times 2.5 would be around about 80 plus hours. So this is doing exactly what it should do. Um, it's not gonna last five days like that. It's gonna last probably, so it's gonna last 33 hours, a day and a half. So what we'll have is people come back to us and say, look, I've got about uh, 90 or 100 hours out of a unit as an actual amp hour. And they say, I thought I would've got more out of it. So they got four days out of it, but they'll come back and say, but I thought I would've got more. When you go through and look at the math, it's very simple. You can't expect this to give you 120 amp hour of usable power when it's set at 80% DOD. So it's more about what can the what is the fridge pulling or drawing as opposed to what this can do. This will again cut out 8.4 or 8.5. What you'll find, for example, if the fridge was plugged into this unit and it was cutting out the fridge at 10.6, so the fridge will stop working, but the lights will still keep going. We'll get customers say that the Nomad is not working. It's not the Nomad PU, it's the fridge. You probably need to put the setting on low. So low, medium, high, the low setting means it will operate with a lower voltage. So again, 8.4, 8.5 discharge, 12.6 fully charged. When you go to the camp slot, again, there's no point trying to overcharge it. That's another question I'm going to come up here shortly. Um, and the, the reason for that is when it's fully charged, it's fully charged. You can't get it more charged when it's fully charged. So people will try and pump more and more power into it at 12.6 and have it out for four or five hours on a solar panel more. Okay, or they'll have it in the inverter trying to plug that and get more power in it before night time. There's no point. Once it's fully charged, it's fully charged. You have a lot of usable power in this, so there's no point trying to keep on 
charging it more and more and more and more. So once it's at that rate, it's fully charged and it'll get you through the night. So you've got to remember that during the night, once your fridge is cold, it's probably going to pull one, one and a half amp. So during the night, it's going to only pull down, say, 20, 25 amp during the night, which means you're still about 60% left, still got two or three days left. You put on charge the next day, you get it fully charged and do the same thing over and over and over again, which is what most people do. We do it in the tour business with, with the fridges every day. So it cycles every day and it gets topped up every night and that's the way it should work. So that's with fridges. It's more about what are the ranges of the fridges, what temperature you've got it set at and then working at how many amp your fridge draws. Take the lid off if you've got a, a fridge at the moment you want to test how many amp this will allow you to have. So that's fridges and also not using it as jump start. Okay, so it's only two questions of the 15, 16 we've got. So we'll cut through to uh, tutorial number two. We'll cover up a lot of those questions uh, in a quicker manner uh, than the fridge. But it's very, very important that we cover the fridge off because it's such an important accessory uh, that people obviously want to use. So we'll come back to you shortly and go on to uh, question three.